Okay, we've been talking a lot about exponential functions, and now I just want to talk a little bit about one application. We talked about another one a couple days ago. We talked about uh, com compound interest formula. This is a, a different one, but it kind of works out the same. Uh, different, but the same. Here we're looking at, we're, we're observing this bacterial growth, and we're realizing that on the first day, zero day, the beginning of time, the beginning of time that we were counting, we noticed we have a thousand bacteria. And at the same time, the next day, a day later, we have 2,000. And we keep checking the same time the next day, and we have 4,000, 8,000, 16,000. And we realize, hey, this thing is doubling. So we're trying to ask ourselves, well, do we have, can we make a formula? Can we make a, can we make a function? We start off with just saying this, this f of x thing and say, it's going to be b times a to the power of x possibly plus some c value. <clears throat> And here are some really important things to remember because people get these in reverse order and there's a couple of just things that people kind of screw up here. B is the initial value or the initial amount. So let's call this initial value. In this case, the initial value or the initial amount is on day zero is 1,000. A is the growth factor and today it's a growth factor. When I say growth factor, as stupid as it sounds, it doesn't necessarily mean growth. It could be a decay factor. Uh, we talked about that the other day that a can't equal zero, but a can be greater than zero. And if it is greater, I'm sorry, it can be greater than one. It, right? <laughs> sorry, it has to be greater than zero. It can't be equal to one. If it's if it's greater than one, then we have a growth factor. We have something that's increasing. If the value of a is greater than zero but less than one, then right, we're we're multiplying a fraction. As you multiply proper fractions, you get smaller and smaller numbers, so it, it would decay. All right, and then remember that this x thing here is going to be our variable. And because we set ours up today, we set it up in, as f of t. So we're going to go back and we're going to kind of fill in the blanks here and see what this might look like. I think it's really pretty straightforward. So we're going to say here the f of t here, f of t, the number of bacteria that we have after t number of days, is that 1,000 bacteria that we had, right, times our growth factor, and we say, we see our growth factor is a doubling factor, right? 1,000 goes to 2,000 to 4,000 to 8,000 to 16,000. It keeps being multiplied by 2. So our growth factor is 2, and our variable t is time. In this case, we don't have a c value, and we'll talk about that a little bit, a little bit later, but it doesn't really fit into what we're doing right now. Okay, so uh, how could this help you, and what are some pitfalls? This could help, help well, what if you wanted to know? How many bacteria would we have in a day and a half? Right? For any, let's say, yeah, how many would we have in 36 hours? So 36 hours would be a day and a half. So we'd have F of, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Three halves? Three halves? That's a day and a half, isn't it? It would be equal to the 1,000 bacteria we have times 2 to the 3 halves power. Now, again, if you get some really crazy number back and you're looking at like, you know, it should fit somewhere in here, right? It should be somewhere, I'm not saying directly between two and 4,000, but it'd be in this range. If you get back some insane number, you have to maybe stop and ask yourself why. And what might have happened was you might have thought to yourself, I'll just simplify this 1,000 times two. Remember, again, friends, we have PEMDAS. PEMDAS has been with us for a very long time and we have an exponent happening and we can't do any multiplication, right, until we our exponents done. So first thing you'd have to do is you have to take two to the three halves power, put that into your calculator, you'll get a number back. Then multiply that times the 1,000. If you don't do that, it's going to be a mess. And that number does come out to be, I did it on my calculator a minute ago, came out to be uh, 2,828, which is reasonable, right? It should be somewhere in between two and 4,000 bacteria in the colony at that time. So here's another huge pitfall. And I want to make sure that we have this clear, that if I say to you uh, 72 hours, and you say, oh, t is 72. Remember, in this case, t is time in days. So you would have to translate that. You'd have to do 72 divided by 24 is equal to 3. And hopefully, without being too sarcastic, you can see that 72 and 3 are not the same number. So you have to be really, really careful about not uh, mixing your metaphors, as it were. If, if time is in hours, then you have to convert it into hours. If it's in days, you convert it to days, and so on. Um, I had a quiz the other day where somebody was trying to find a threshold weight for somebody, and the, and the threshold was done something times the, the height cubed of a person or something. And the person was 
five feet six inches tall. So the person, uh, student, very good student, put in 66 inches. Well, the formula had no idea, and the, the formula took that 66 to be 66 feet. So the guy comes out with a threshold weight that he, if he weighs more than 266,200 pounds, that he's in serious uh, risk of, of death. So then I'm like, well, of course he wouldn't be. He's five feet six, and he weighs... 266,200 pounds. So again, be careful. Make sure that if T is in days, then you convert everything to days. If it's in hours, convert it to hours, okay? All right, I hope you took good notes and I'll see you in the morning. Well, that's not this function. It's a different function.